As I've said before, I'm a nerd and a geek. Uh, my friends and family know it, and they often remind me of it. Uh, but one thing that this series has helped me to do is to embrace my nerdish and geekish DNA. Uh, by now, you've seen quite a bit of it already, but in this episode, I'm going to completely nerd out. But like most major undertakings, I will approach this in stages. So let me address the first point on my nerd agenda. Way back in the day, when I started this series... Uh, modded Minecraft 1.18.2 and 1.19.2 were pretty much the bomb, and Vanilla Minecraft 1.20 was in the home stretch toward release. And so the stage was set for the very curious and organic gathering of the mods. And what I'm talking about is this. Uh, for Vanilla Minecraft, major game versions release typically once a year, and minor revisions come out every once in a while until the next big version is released. Uh, it's not quite the same as the Swallows returning to San Juan Capistrano, but is definitely settled into a pattern, and in general, most vanilla players are running the latest bits. Why wouldn't they? But modded Minecraft is a very different animal. Uh, this is because the whole point of playing modded Minecraft is for the mods. I mean, people are playing modded Minecraft to experience and enjoy the stuff in those mods, uh, stuff that they can't get from Vanilla Minecraft alone. However, those same mods are not official releases. They come from individuals and teams developing these mods for the good of the community, uh, or whatever else motivates them. And there are no real rules or restrictions as to what they write, and perhaps more importantly, what version, major or minor, that they write them for. Now, it might seem like a recipe for anarchy, but strangely enough, a kind of order takes shape in the maelstrom of chaos. Because what has historically happened is that once a major version of Minecraft is released, people will start writing mods for it. However, that shift takes a little time, and so there will be subsequent minor releases and people will write mods specifically targeting those minor releases to ensure maximum compatibility. And invariably, one of those minor releases will be the latest release long enough that it kind of reaches a tipping point where enough mods are written for it that it becomes the de facto version of modded Minecraft. For example, Minecraft 1.19 was released, and there were four minor releases before Minecraft 1.20 was released. Now these are Minecraft 1.19.1 through 1.19.4. Now mods were written for all of those versions, However, 1.19.2 was out there long enough that it achieved that critical mass I just mentioned. And therefore, while any given mod written for Minecraft 1.19 may have versions of the mod written for any one of those four minor releases, almost all of the 1.19 mods have at least one version specifically for 1.19.2. And therefore, if you are running big juicy mod packs, like me, then that's where you're probably spending all of your time. And I am. Uh, after all, that is where you get the widest variety and the most choice, and in my humble opinion, the most potential fun. So, uh, 1.19.2 was where I ran the ill-fated Griffin Hall series, and it has been the home of the Griffin Manor series. Uh, but since then, Minecraft 1.20 came out, and now 1.21 has released. But why did I stick with 1.19.2 all that time? Well, uh, when 1.20 first came out, there were obviously no mods available for it. Zero. Zip. Nada. Uh, however, after a while, the mods started to roll in. But it was months before there were many mods to choose from. And believe it or not, I did go out looking. Uh, I was checking to see if the mods that I use in 1.19.2 were available in 1.20. And many of them were. Uh, but many of them weren't. However, Minecraft 1.21 has released, and two things have happened. Uh, the first is that the mods for 1.20 have accumulated to the point where almost every mod I use in 1.19.2, uh, or at least 95% of them, are available in 1.20.1. The second is the updates and new mods for 1.19.2 are coming less and less frequently. <laughs> In fact, they've almost completely dried up. So as the modding community ramps up on 1.21, I think it's time to make the jump to 1.20, uh, specifically 1.20.1, which seems to be the minor release where most mod authors have settled. 
Therefore, to make the jump without killing the series entirely, I need to make sure that I know what I'm jumping into. So I took the Excel spreadsheet that I use for tracking the mods I use, uh, including the versions and the dates that I added them, and I added a few columns for 1.20.1, 120.4, and 120.6, which seem to be the releases that most mods target. Then I went through all the mods I use in 1.19.2 and determined for which of those I could find the same mods in 1.20. By an overwhelming majority, 1.20.1 was the answer. So that's where I'm headed. And the optimist in me believes that it should be easy to make the jump. Uh, I should be able to set up a new profile in Curse Forge load up all the 1.20.1 versions of the mods, give it all a quick test spin in a throwaway world, and if nothing explodes through all of that, I would then copy over my save game from 1.19.2 and give it a bash. <laughs> but the battle scarred realist in me has other ideas, uh, but those won't completely stop me, but they will keep me on my toes as I ease my way into the pool. However, I'm going to take this opportunity to make some adjustments to the mod mix and that will certainly complicate the upgrade. Uh, for one thing, I'm going to retire immersive engineering. Now I love the idea behind it, but it does require some hand holding and extra maintenance and I'm a fire and forget kind of guy. Uh, especially as the built up portion of my world grows, I don't want to spend more and more time going back and doing repairs. Now there's also the fact that the create mod has grown into its own mod phenomenon and for the most part, anything I would normally do in immersive engineering, I can do in the create sphere of influence. So nowadays there's really no point in having both. Uh, back in the day, video killed the radio star, but I kind of feel like Create has pretty much done the same for immersive engineering. Uh, there are also a few mods that never existed in 1.19.2, and I've been eyeing them and drooling for a while. So, uh, now I can go get them and enjoy them. And this includes some mods that give me more trees and crops, and several new add-ons for the Create mod that should be a lot of fun to play with. And that, all by itself, should be enough. Uh, however, I'm apparently a glutton for punishment and my OCD has been bugging me, so I want to take this time to also do the economic overhaul I've been talking about off and on. Now, the first step is to redo villager professions. And what I want to do is just wipe them all out and start from scratch. Uh, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, there's no way to remove or disable the existing vanilla professions, so I'm going to attempt to redefine those and add quite a few of my own. Now, I think this mix of professions will give a more interesting mix and representation in the new settlements, and I think this mix will be more practical and useful to me in terms of gameplay. Uh, a key element of this effort is to redefine and reassign workstations. Now, I have always hated the vanilla assignments, Hated with a capital H. For example, barrels are a mighty useful storage container and I love to use them in vanilla. Uh, in fact, they are my primary storage container in vanilla and I explain why in my deep dive mod video for storage drawers. However, they are also the workstation for fishermen, which means that building a base in a village results in a village overflowing with fishermen and not much else. Even when that base happens to be deep in the desert, far from any water. Another one that has always bugged me but didn't get in the way of practicality was brewing stands for priests. Now I suppose they were going with the idea that the priest is a healer in an RPG sort of way and healing in Minecraft is either through eating or potions. So assigning brewing stands to priests is how they tried to make that connection. Meanwhile, the lectern, which would, in my humble opinion, be absolutely perfect for priests, is assigned to the librarian, which really, and again, in my humble opinion, should work with bookshelves. Uh, but the problem there is that a single maxed out enchanting station in a village will mean that probably half your village will wind up being librarians. Though that's not necessarily a bad thing if you're trying to get access to mending enchantments. Uh, but my point here is that the villager profession system was and remains a kludgy system. And instead of cleaning it up, they've doubled down on the kludginess. <laughs> if such a word exists. Uh, so I want to break all of that and we'll probably move villager workstations away from functional or common decorative blocks. 
For example, I think that for most jobs, I might create a custom cash register block, uh, one for each of the applicable professions. It doesn't serve an actual functional purpose, and it is decorative, but wouldn't make sense to throw 30 of them into a single shop, so it should work in both the practical and cosmetic context. So here's what I'm thinking of at the moment. Um, I would create an alchemist profession who would own the brewing stand and sell potions. Uh, currently, I have apiarists or beekeepers from Buzzier Bees, and I would probably let them remain as is. Uh, the architect profession would be a new one, and they would sell schematics from the Create mod. The armorer would remain, but redefined to use different workstation. Uh, I want to add an auto mechanic profession that would sell the vehicle components from the auto mobility mod, and I plan to add more foods and finished dishes, including more cakes, pies, and that kind of thing. So I would also like to add a baker that deals with the new influx of baked goods. Uh, I would add a brewer profession, and they would sell beers, ales, and various pickled goods. The butcher would be slightly altered, as would the cartographer. Uh, I would add a carpenter, which would sell various types of planks and wooden pieces, and I would add a chandler, which would deal with candles, lanterns, and lights. I would create my own chef profession that would sell the better and fancier dishes, and a cook profession that would deal with the simpler and plainer fare. Um, clerics would probably deal with a limited range of enchantments, while the new confectioner profession would run a sweet shop, and the cooper would sell barrels, boxes, and crates. The doctor would provide various healing potions and remedies, and I'm toying with the idea of adding some new physical healing items like bandages or something along those lines. The farmer might actually remain untouched, but the fisherman would move to a new workstation. The uh, Fletcher might remain unchanged, however I would add a gardener profession that would sell all sorts of seeds and saplings, and I would add a glazier that provides glass and glass panes. The new grocer profession would provide all sorts of raw food types and innkeepers will provide a mix of food and drink types. Leather workers and librarians will get new workstations. Lumberjacks will be added and provide all sorts of logs. Masons will receive a new workstation and the new miller profession will be tied to the millstone from the create mod. <laughs> I will either repurpose the nitwit as the new politician profession or I will basically clone nitwits as politicians. Uh, potters will deal with clay, terracotta, and related goods. Shepherds, toolsmiths, and weaponsmiths will receive new workstations. Uh, I will add a tailor profession to provide clothes and a weaver profession to provide cloth. I want to add a vintner profession for selling wines and related goods. And I will probably need to find mods for or, or make those wines and related goods as well. Something else I want to look into is changing up my guard villagers. Now, at the moment, I give them black leather armor and they kind of sort of look like English constables, which is what I was going for. However, I would like to see if I can rebrand them somehow. And the simplest way to go about this is to come up with some new custom armor types that are designed to look like uniforms. Uh, I think I would come up with some police uniforms and military uniforms, and that might be the best approach as I eventually branch out into different cultures in the neighboring regions. With the redefinition and addition of all the professions, I would then need to clear out the existing trades and come up with all new and relevant trades for each of the professions. And... I need to line them all up to the new economy, which is not going to be emerald based, but instead will be coin based. Now I've already created the coins, but I will need to revisit that work with the big change in mods and the Minecraft version. At the moment, the coins work like this. At the bottom of the economic ladder is a copper farthing. Two copper farthings equal one iron penny, and two iron pennies equal one cast iron tuppence. Two of those will get you a zinc shilling, and two shillings will get you a brass two shilling piece. Two of those equal a silver half crown, and two half crowns equals one electrum crown. Two electrum crowns equals a gold half pound, and two of those equals a netherite pound. So, the monetary system is base two. Each level's worth twice the level below, and half of the level above. Uh, I wanted to do a decimal system, which is base 10, and that's the number system we use for generally counting. Uh, it is generally easier on my old brain, but I needed the conversion to fit into the crafting grid, and there's only 9 squares in that grid. And moving to base 9 just makes my poor head hurt. 
Uh, besides, going that route meant that a single netherite pound would be worth a boatload of copper farthings. <laughs> so much so that there would be really no point in even having the coin. However, with this system, a netherite pound is worth 256 copper farthings, and since coins can be melted down, you could convert a single netherite pound ultimately into 256 copper nuggets or 32 copper ingots. Working the other way, if I'm ever hard up for netherite, I can take the same 32 copper ingots and run through conversions and come up with a single netherite nugget, which by itself is useless. But if you do the conversions on 256 copper ingots, you will eventually arrive at one netherite ingot, which is useful, but such a long and drawn out process that I would need to be mighty desperate to go through all that, which totally works for survival. And after all of that is said, and eventually done, I will need to go in and clean things up in the current game world. Now I am sure there will be some cleanup required. Uh, I hope it's minimal, but I am old enough and wise enough, which is to say that I'm scarred enough uh, to know that it might be pretty bad. But I am also optimistic enough and perhaps a bit naive enough to still go for it. But uh, I think it will ultimately be worth it. I hope you will tune in again to see the end result, and in the meanwhile, I hope this finds you and yours in good health, good spirits, and a touch of good fortune. Take care of yourselves out there. Cheers.